celebrate, even, even as the people celebrated, as Jesus rode into Jerusalem that day, Lord, we want to celebrate Jesus. So bless our time together, O God. May our hearts be open to receive the blessing of this day. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. I want to share with you then the scripture that reminds us of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them. And He will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. I invite you to stand and join with the band, and uh, our Sunday school will be parading in as we sing together this morning.
okay, that wore me out. Go ahead and have a seat. Thanks again to our Sunday school children for helping us out this morning in our parade. We'll continue now with the passion narrative from Matthew 26, verses 14 through 29. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man, and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him and to one another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. And Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then Jesus took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from, from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom.
When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. When Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am greatly grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him, a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do. Do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on the sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father? And he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it, it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were abandoned? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled.
time of expressing our joys and our concerns and our prayer time. There have been some. I will pray and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Loving, gracious Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being able to come and worship this morning in your house, to be able to come to this time of prayer, to lift up our own concerns that have been upon our hearts and those that are, that are before the body this morning. Lord, before we lift all those up to you, because we know them full well because they're on our hearts, Lord, we just give you honor, glory, and praise. We think of the, the exciting day that it was in Jerusalem when Jesus came riding in on a donkey. How exciting and how awesome that was to be able to proclaim the King of Kings coming. Lord, we can still proclaim that. For Jesus truly is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That has not changed. What has changed is what all took place in the passion of that week. The passion, the love that you have for each of us, that Jesus would come and would die on the cross to save each one of us from our sins. Lord, where we have failed you and where we have sinned against you, we ask that you would forgive us. Lord, we thank you that we can come to this place during this time on our calendar that set aside for celebrating Palm Sunday today, but then going through the week and remembering your passion. The passion of Christ going through this week. The passion of your love for each one of us. Lord, guide us that we would each be mindful of you in this week and in those terms. That we'd be prepared for Thursday, for Good Friday, so that we can truly rejoice next Sunday in the celebration of Easter and the resurrection of our Christ from the dead. Lord, in this time we come before you with our prayer concerns. There are several that are listed, others upon our hearts. Lord, we ask that you would guide Sharon as she continues to prepare herself for the biopsy tomorrow and the news that she will hear. May you guide all those who are surrounding her and who are working with her and they will know the next right steps to take. Lord, for Donette and her family, we ask that you would bless them, comfort them, strengthen them during these days as Donette has had to say goodbye to her father. Lord, for Jeremy and for the way that you are working his life, may you continue your touch upon him, that you would ease his pain, that he'd be well again. For little Chase, Lord, we ask that you would bless him, that you would heal his little body, God, his parents, as they are by his side. It's hard for parents not to be able to to really do much when a little one is sick. And so, Lord, we ask that you would comfort them and strengthen them as well. Lord, we ask that you would bless Dean. We lift him up to you. I thank you that he is here this morning. Lord, guide him as I know he continues to struggle with these heart issues and, and all the other things that are going on as a result of it. Lord, may you give him strength in this day. Lord, I thank you that he is your faithful servant. And I ask that you would comfort him and strengthen him for the next steps that will be taken in terms of his health. And bless Susie as, as she also stands by his side and is, I know, very concerned. And Lord, for their, the whole Trap family as they continue to prepare for the next steps of ministry, may you continue to Give them strength. May you prepare the place that you would have for them to go. Prepare those people and be ready to open their arms in love for them. Lord, I thank you for the people of Sunny Cross. And I thank you what a wonderful congregation you have pulled together. Lord, guide us in, in ministry. God, each of us as we find the place that you would have us to minister, whether it's within the walls of this church or outside. Lord, I thank you that we have good news of Jesus Christ to be able to spread to everyone. And Lord, I thank you for 
the words that Christ gave us as we all pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I ask that our ushers would come forward and receive God's tithes and our offerings. Continuing the reading now from the 26th chapter of Matthew, verses 57 through 75. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. But they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. And then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? And they answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face, and they struck Jesus, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him. And she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, Peter denied it with an oath. 
I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. And then Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. And then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out, and he wept bitterly. I am not scared to understand. of silver to the chief priests and the elders. 
He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed. And he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury mourners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave for them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they say against you? But he gave them no answer, not even a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to releasing a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with this innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil deed has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head.
After mocking Jesus, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. And they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking Jesus, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lima, Sebastiani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders heard it. They said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last.
the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After this, after his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers? Go, make it secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Would you please stand for our final song?
these doors and do the goodwill of the Lord. Okay? We will.